um, just you know a, a short excerpt from um, a, my memoir. I was maybe nine here, and I don't know how it re relates to what the fuck is happening here, but um, I thought it was brave, and I read it all the time, and I think to myself, you know, this kid has some gumption. I feel like I've hit gold when I find three dirty picture magazines in the pile of abandoned books under the house. I dust them off to reveal a series of blondes wearing very small brassieres over their very large breasts. I read about women who are excited to discover something called the orgasm. None of the women have any clothes on, and all of them have their legs wide open. I look at the pictures of them rubbing their cocoa breads with shiny red fingernails. It's all very strange and exciting. My heart is beating fast and then slow and then fast again. In some of the pictures, the women look happy and sad at the same time. As if they're eating an ice cream cone that isn't really their favorite flavor. <laughs> Looking at the photographs makes me want to touch myself too. Plus I want to know if my cocoa bread looks the same as the cocoa breads in the magazine. I decide the only way to find out is to have a look. I choose the one place nobody would find me. The pit toilet, or as you call it here, the outhouse. Day after day, it stands empty until there's a water lock off. Not much more than a woodshed built over a 20-foot concrete-covered sewage receptacle, the pit toilet is so small that only a makeshift toilet seat of wood can fit inside. And it smells like milk farts all the time. I look down into the hole. There are giant roaches crawling up the inner walls of the seat. Further down, bits of things are floating in what looks like a big, black swimming pool. I climb up onto the seat and slowly squat. My naked bottom hangs over the gigantic opening of the square toilet. I carefully examine my cocoa bread. There are some things that look like mouths keeping a big secret. When I push the mouths open, a tongue pokes out at me. When I poke the tongue, the lips get wet. So I poke the tongue again. And again, and again, the lips get wetter and wetter. I am bouncing up and down so much, my foot slips and I fall into the pit. My right leg and right arm are both completely in. The left arm is grasping at the side of the seat. The left leg is caught in a strange angle that has just barely kept me from falling all the way in. I can't call anyone for help. The dirty magazine is sprawled open on the floor with Devil Daisy's bottom cheeks separated by the spine of the open pages. The stench from the waist below makes it difficult to breathe. And there are things I cannot see crawling along my foot. My palms sweat, make it impossible to get a firm grip on the wood. It takes me nearly an hour to drag myself up and out from the mouth of the pit. And when I finally collapse, shaking and picking pieces of roach legs off my hip and thigh, I know I'm never going to look at my cocoa bread ever again. <laughs> And to kind of echo Hakim's poem, I'm reading my own open letter to, you know, CNN and Fox and the mainstream fucking media. Dear anchors and editors, etc. If you were to summon me for 15 minutes of an on-air conversation on any topic of your choosing, I would arrive on time in my most revolutionary gear because a few seconds of fame is a lot of power in these times of digitally altered truths. We underground runners flirting seductive with the mainstream have long since known the value of your coveted reviews. But I cannot, and I have to say that I wrote this maybe five years ago, six years ago, ten years ago maybe. I cannot, with any freedom of inte or integrity of conscience, accept your portrayal of Iraqi stories. I am resisting your sporty reportage of veiled mothers holding malnourished babies still warm from the bloody bullet pushed patriotic through their already ailing bodies. Your headlines remove the dignity from poor people's dreams when you endorse the bombing of Baghdad or Basra or Umkasar. We know nothing of these places but what you choose to tell us and your arrogance scrolling across the bottom of my screen. Fictional accounts embedded in the jaunts of journalists joyriding 
painting on the backs of tanks, the old lie painted on the faces of those boys, barely fucking yet, dulce et decorum is. Honor cannot dry the tears of a mother, a wife, a daughter with a folded flag standing in for a father. These are the horrors of a story still unfolding, of tiny fingers exploding, still holding seasoned rice, the terrors of every war, and still you cannot tell me what we are still fighting for. Information is a weapon, and you, Vox Populi turned propaganda machine, have turned the nozzle against us. Nothing is to be trusted in your make-believe real TV movies. I'm tired of flipping from correspondent to dishonest correspondent. Your tall tales of metal statues falling are new. American idols are not new. American idols fall all the time on primetime TV, and in between we watch young black men eating raw testicles of buffaloes while presidents give speeches that inject pride into a more shameful history than you or I are willing to admit. We pay too much for your opinions disguised as news. There, you are no different from our politicians jerking off in the mouths of underage population. We are tired of your backhanded rhetoric, your logo-printed views, we need to, a force who is unafraid to present events as they occur. And I'm really thinking we need more than your carefully crafted letters here. We, we, it's better for us to, to whisper the revolution from air to air. Better to turn the volume down and have more sex. Better to fuck than to tuck our bare feet under the inertia of these misled masses. Better to stick our tongues up each other's asses than sit on our couch with our mouths open wide, inhaling the funk of your artificially expelled cacophony of noxious poisonous gases. So um, I wrote this one because at one point I was like, you know, when I was kind of becoming known and, you know, I started having fans and started having more Facebook likes and what the fuck, you know, like, I, you know, I was like, oh my God, I have to like be careful about what I say now because I have to be careful how many times I say fuck or, you know, like, you know, whatever. I have to be more careful and more careful and more fucking careful. And I'm thinking, you know, I really need to write something that is about being, that is about being less careful. So I wrote this one, um, you know, just to kind of like jolt myself into kind of remaining honest and saying how I feel and why I feel it and blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, I'm talking, preaching to the fucking choir here, right? <laughs> These walls of unthinkable opportunities curve close around my mounting ambitions. Per performer pushing against performer, publishers pricing the fruits of our strange struggle towards honesty. There was a time when rebellion and poetry required nothing to sustain each other. Poets dwelled among poets. We were all willing to die for the word. We were writers wanting to live for little else, and these overused cliches were lines we all believed in. We were just looking for a better way to write them. Back then, I would have challenged that Jamaican woman in my doctor's office shouting, faggotism is that disease we need to be cured from. Without thinking, I would have moved to correct her wrong. With so many black faces in that room, I would have known how important it was to be out as a lesbian. But these days, these days, these days, my lips are stuck to the ass crack of that mini dick executive deciding how much I will earn this year. I can't seem to forget that he could easily make me the first famous Caribbean American lesbian diva have me cuss you out in two languages which is tell you about your motherfucking bumbo rascal, two-faced nigga, bitch, homophobic, racist, cunt, self. That image is easy enough to digest for those plugged into the idiot box. Revolution is acceptable when folded into programming. We have all been closing our eyes against this flash of light. The religious right keeps blaming on the poor Muslims with... Ignorance is the greatest danger we can pass on to our children. Kermit and the Cookie Monster are not enough anymore. Sesame Street wasn't that diverse anyway. It was never really okay to be green. No racism on that multicultural blue screen. Back then, back then, I wasn't an almost American. Yes, red and blue and white stars still stood for freedom. Back then, I was still grooving to Langston and Brathwaite and the blues. Back then, back then, hope was the blood that fueled my veins. Why? Why was never 
never the question. It was always when. When do you think we were going to do the impossible? And when? When do you think we could surpass that? And I want to make my way back. Back to when the laughter was more than the joke. Back when freedom fighters were yoked by callous hands and careless feet. Back when art and the man were two separate issues. Back, back when art and the man were two separate issues. Back when writers wrote, back when, back when, back when, back when, back when, back when writers wrote, back when writers wrote what they wanted, regardless of money. Back when the blues, back when the blues, back when the blues was laced with something sweet. Like, back when the blues was laced with something sweet, like the war cry of revenge and the writers, and the writers, and the writers, and, and the writers call that shit jazz. And white people still wondering how that nigga noise got up under their skin, and, and the dancers called it jazz. And the future was a flexible skyscraper. We all were constructing jazz. Black bodies moving sexy under the color of an assumed night like jazz. I, I want to write like jazz without the pump, jazz without the ceremony, jazz without the bony hip of some MTV model competing with my pen. I want to travel, I want to travel back to way back when the blues was the ache of a landless people. Back when the dust was not so thick over our dreams. I, 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 I want to live, I want to live in that, I want to live, I want to live in the baseline. I want to live in the baseline of that forgotten generation. I want to, I want to hear the screams of Billy and Nina and Zora and Jazz. I want to go to bed with Coltrane and Miles and Domino and Jazz. Fuck you, Mr. Big Time Record Producer. Duke Ellington played his Jazz. Fuck you, Mr. Casting Director. Charlie Parker played his Jazz. Fuck you, I'm gonna pimp you for your art till we can no longer make money from you. Jazz, I will not let you kill the rhythm in my jazz. I'm gonna play it. Jazz, I'm gonna play it. Even if I die poor, jazz in an unmarked grave. Jazz, like Zora Neale Hurston. Jazz, away from my own people, Nina Simone. Jazz, I'm gonna play it like Nina, like Ella, like Sarah, like jazz. I'm gonna play like Nina, like Ella, like Sarah, like jazz, like freedom, like fighter, like fuck you, like jazz. Gonna play like freedom, like fighter, like fuck you, like jazz. Gonna play like freedom, like fighter, like fuck you, like jazz. Haiku, haiku on Bush's second term. How can you fuck up so many times and still be voted president? <laughs> so, um, you know, the left wing, you know, I came into politicization um, in the late 90s, you know, I came out as a lesbian in Jamaica and some shit happened and, um, you know, I got assaulted by about a dozen boys in Jamaica and decided, you know, I'm going to come and run nymph-like through the, you know, the kind of socially free topography of the American terrain. So I imagined myself, you know, flitting, you know, through the meadows of New York City, um, you know, with other lesbians. We would all be dressed in white, kind of like, just, you know, smelling like patchouli and running around being like lesbian, you know? I don't know, it's what I imagined. And then I came to New York and uh, I was like, shit, I'm black. <sighs> Fuck, man. This is some shit. And then there's this thing called being an immigrant. And like, women aren't that free in America, man. Shit. Fuck. What am I going to do? And then I started being a poet. You know, and, and the reason I started being a poet is because I started listening to radio stations like WBAI and voices like Amy Goodman, and I started reading writers like June Jordan and reading the works of Audre Lorde, where I knew something wasn't right. And I started traveling across this country and kind of meeting in rooms like this where when you say shit like, you know, you, the, the, the shit ain't right and like sexism and homophobia and like give me the fucking rights to my body and I want my daughter to be able to wear whatever she wants to wear. And, and people don't look at you strange, you know, it's like every day out in the world you're doing like feminist 101, racism 101, like every fucking thing 101. So, um, you know, so, 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 so. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tickled pink to be in a room of people who are, even if you don't self-identify as leftist, the mainstream media would call you leftist. <laughs> 
So this is a letter to my leftists. It's, it's a rant for my leftist people here. This is for us, inside joke, you know. If I read this out in the world, they'd be like, huh, I don't know what to talk about. But this is between us. So thank you very much. I'll also be outside signing books right after this for those of you who want to, um, are independently wealthy and want to like promote, you know, put your money where your fucking politics is, buy shit that you, it's not like, you know, out in the world, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Being queer has no bearing on race, my white publicist says. True love is never affected by color. I curved the flashes of me crashing across the table to knock his blonde skin from Manhattan to Montego Bay to bear witness to the bloody beatings of brown boys accused of the homosexual crime of buggery. Amidst the newfangled fads and fallacies, the New Age claims that sexual and racial and gender freedom has finally come for all. These under-informed, self-congratulating, pseudo-intellectual utterances reflect how apolitical the left has become. It is now commonplace to hear young activists say the terms black and lesbian and radical and progressive come across as confrontational. Tongue and courage tied with fear, I am at once livid, ashamed, and paralyzed by the neoconservatism breeding malicious amongst us. Gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, ally, questioning, two-spirit, non-gender, fucking conforming. Every year we add a new letter. Yet every day, every day, I become more and more afraid to say black or woman. Every day, under the pretense of unity, I swallow something I should have said about the epidemic epidemic of AIDS in Africa, or the violence against teenage girls in East New York, or the mortality rate of young boys on the south side of Chicago. Even in friendly inside conversation, I have to rein in that bell hooksian urge to kill motherfuckers who say stupid shit to me all day. Bitter branches all day. Bitter branches of things I cannot say out loud sprout deviant from my neck. Fuck you, you fucking racist, sexist turd. Fuck you for crying about homophobia while you exploit the desperation of undocumented immigrants to clean your hallways, bathe your children, and cook your dinner for less than you spend on a tax-deductible lunch. I want to scream out loud. All oppression is connected, you dick. At the heart. At the heart of every political action in history stood the dykes who were feminists, the anti-racists who were gay rights activists, the men who believed being vulnerable could only make this community stronger. As the violence against LGBT people increases, where are the LGBT centers in those neighborhoods where the assaults occur most frequently? As the tide of the Supreme Court changes, where are the marches to support a woman's right to an abortion? And what are we doing about health insurance for those who still can't afford it? HIV AIDS was once a reason for gay white men to act up. Now they're in different spells, the death of straight black women and imprisoned Latino boys. Apparently, if the tragedy does not immediately impact you, you don't give a fuck. A revolution once pregnant with expectation flounders. Apathetic and individualistic, no one knows where to vote or what to vote for anymore. The faces that now represent us have begun to look like the ones who used to burn crosses and beat bull daggers and fuck faggots up the ass with loaded guns. The companies that sponsor our events do not honor the way we live or love or dance or pray. Progressive politicians still dance around the issue of gay parenting and the term marriage is still reserved for those unions sanctioned by a church-controlled state. For all the landmarks we celebrate, we are still niggas and freaks and faggots and minstrel references for jokes created on the funny pages of a white, middle-class, rich, hetero a normative world, the leftist manifesto, the current leftist manifesto is a corporate agenda. And outside that agenda, a young boy dressed in drag is swallowing someone else's semen so he can pay for dinner. A woman is beaten every 12 seconds. Every two minutes, a girl is raped somewhere in America. And while we stand here well-dressed and rejoicing in India, in China, in South America, a child, a small child cuts the clock to construct your 
new shirt, your new shoe, that old imperialism held upright by the misuse of impoverished lives. Gather round ye fags, ye dykes, ye trannies, ye progressives, all those committed to radical social change. We are not simply at a political crossroads. We are buried knee deep in the quagmire for a battle for our very humanity. The powers that have always been have already come for the Jew, the communist, the trade unionist, the terrorist. The time to act is now. The time to speak is now. The time to blog is now. Now while there are still ways we can fight these motherfuckers. Now because the rights we have left are still so very few. Now because it is the right thing to do. Now before you open the door to find they have finally come for you.